Okay, so I want to see how we went through some of these, because there's a lot of interesting ideas in these, um, and we may not have spotted all of them. There's some really tricky stuff that's going on, okay? So this first one that people started missing is actually they did really well at doing a to the power of 5 squared, and they said that was a to the power of 10. And on the bottom, they correctly had the a to the power of 4. But lots of people just put the 2 there. What was the problem of just putting 2 there? You didn't square it. Every single thing, there are three things inside here. All of them need to be squared. So that shouldn't be a 2. In fact, that should be a 4 there. Okay, So we're going to change that to a 4. That's the first stage. And we've still got a 3a that we have. Now, the a to the 10 over a to the 4 simplifies directly to a to the power of 6. And the 4 is still there. And then we're multiplying by 3a. Now, if you have an a by itself, what power is secretly written there? 1. There's actually a 1. So the new power of a is going to be a to the power of 7. And you've got 4 times 3 which is 12. So your answer is 12a to the 7, OK? Now, the second one that we've got here, we can split them into two separate fractions. So the two separate fractions that we would have is 2x over 4x cubed plus x to the power of 5 over 4x cubed. And we're going to think about how these work. So it's usually best to deal with the number and the algebra bits separate to each other. So this is really like an x to the power of 1. First of all, the x part. What's the power of x going to be for this one? Two. Minus 2. Good. The power of the x is going to be minus 2. And then we've got here, we've got a 2 over 4. What is 2 over 4 the same as? A half. Good. So it's just going to be a half. Now, if you want to, you can either write a half. Or, if you wanted to, you could just say over 2. Because multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by 2. That makes sense, right? If you yeah, multiply yeah. by a half, you're dividing it by 2. But I personally prefer this one. I just, I don't know, I think it looks nicer like that. I just think it looks easier. And then this next one, what's the power going to be of x? 2. two. 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 It's going to be x squared. So we're going to have a plus and an x squared. And then here, even though there's no, not actually a number in front of the x, there's actually a 1 there. So we've got a 1 over 4. We have a quarter of x squared. Someone made a mistake, and instead of writing a quarter x squared, who, well, I'm not going to say who, because that's not fair, and they wrote 4. They decided to pull this 4 from the bottom to the top, which doesn't make sense, because this 4 is telling me I'm dividing by 4. If I have a 4 here, that's multiplying by 4. It's not the same thing. So I'm going to still leave it as the quarter x squared. Okay? Did anyone write it in a different way and they want to see if it's still the same as this and they want to ask if it's the same as this? No? Okay. So we'll go a little bit quicker. If we expand this, we should get 6x minus 2x cubed. Then for this bracket that we have here, we have minus 12x cubed. I'm hoping you spotted that this last bit should have been plus 4x to the power of 4. It's a plus because of the negative times the negative that we've got. Now, I like to start with the biggest power. So we have 4x to the power of 4. And then we've got minus 2x cubed minus 12x cubed. Manayam, what was minus 2x cubed minus 12x cubed? Um, minus 14x 14. 14 cubed. And then you have the plus 6x that is at the end there. OK? This last one was tricky. Um, but Andrew, what answer did you come up for this one? came up with the answer as 6 to the power of x. Now, there was a temptation for many of you to say it was 6 to the power of 2x, or was it 6 to the power of x squared? And I'm going to try and explain that it's actually this rule that we had here. It is this rule, but in reverse. Now, because they both have the same power as each other, that must mean I'm allowed to rewrite it as this. OK, if I were to try and work out what this was, I would say, great, I'll do this to the power of x and I'll do this to the power of x. So I'd have 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of x. And then all you need to do here is just simplify that that 2 times 3 is just 6 to the power of x. So please try not to let these laws feel like they are, you just need to constantly use them. You need to try and stop and think, OK, well, how, how can I apply this? Is this something? That, um, that I can do at this point that we've got here. So I think that's probably the trickiest example that we've got. 
OK, so I'm going to ask for you to have a go um, at as many of these questions as you can do. You will notice at the bottom half of that page, I've also got the answers. OK, these are the answers that are just the quick answers, not like the solution bank one. Don't look at them until you've done a good chunk, and then you can mark them as you go. And then if you've done those, I've got two questions that are from these MAT exams. These MAT exams are the maths admission tests that they use if you want to try and go to like Oxford or Cambridge, you have to take one of those tests. So these are quite like puzzly questions that we've got here. So if you're interested, after you've done some of these, try the extension ones, okay? So there's always gonna be something that's a little bit trickier for you guys to have a go at, okay? <laughs>